Robert Mueller has been investigating President Donald Trump and his associates for more than two years now. About $25 million has been spent, although if the government is successful in seizing the assets of Paul Manafort and others, it may turn out that the investigation will turn a profit for the government. Think about that. The government's seizure of private assets is now being touted as an argument in favor of this investigation. I must wonder if this justifies the divisive effects of the Mueller investigation or compensates the country for the economic impact of a bitterly divided government. But that's not what I really want to talk about. After two years, I think that we should discuss the results of the investigation, the response of the House of Representatives to the Mueller results, and perhaps government corruption. Yes, I read the allegations of campaign finance violations by Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. I have read a lot of allegations of corruption over the last two years, and I think that it's time for some roasted opinions. Harry Truman once had a sign which sat on the resolute desk in the Oval Office, inscribed with the famous phrase, The Buck Stops Here. Truman is also known for a particular quote about government corruption. An honest public servant can't become rich in politics. He cited as the source of a lot of similarly pithy quotes about elected officials in Washington, and although I don't always agree with President Truman's policies, I have to respect his integrity. Despite the acrimony between his predecessor, FDR, and his predecessor, Herbert Hoover, Truman appointed Hoover to preside over the commissions to reorganize the executive branch. Indeed, Hoover and Truman became good friends, so much so that Hoover accepted a presidential pension, which he then donated to charity, just so that Truman would accept his own presidential pension, which he needed desperately to pay his bills. Today's politicians should take a lesson from Truman in personal responsibility and professional conduct. The House of Representatives has launched four investigations in response to the ending of the Mueller inquiry. The Judiciary Committee is searching for obstruction of justice. The Oversight and Reform Committee is searching for corruption. The Intelligence Committee is searching for ties to Russia. And the Ways and Means Committee is looking for tax evasion. Four investigations, folks, all of which essentially began with testimony from Michael Cohen. Now, Cohen was Trump's lawyer for several years, so speaking to him makes sense, doesn't it? Um, no. Just, no. Cohen was convicted of perjury for lying to Congress. Not only that, but in the first hearing of the Oversight and Reform Committee, he may have committed further perjury when he stated that he never sought a position with the White House, which we know is untrue thanks to a Fox News interview from 2016. The Mueller investigation was inaugurated almost before the voting was complete on Election Day. Thanks to various members of the Justice Department, there were literal calls for impeachment hearings before President Trump was even inaugurated. That, coupled with the fact that no crime was apparent, made the Mueller investigation a fishing expedition. The president's feud with the media over the latter's editorial practices and obvious bias against him in most cases meant that there was plenty of cheerleading in favor of this investigation. It also meant that any results were trumpeted as the last bit of evidence necessary to bring Trump down. Two years later, and what the Mueller investigation produces, was a few unrelated financial crimes and several instances of what are called process crimes, perjury, obstruction of justice, and contempt. In short, a fishing expedition by any other name. And if Mueller was on a fishing expedition... Then the multiple committee investigations launched as the special counsel produces their final report are a fishing tournament. Mueller caught a few dozen fish, so now dozens of members of Congress have cast their lines into the same pond, hoping for a nibble. Don't get me wrong, I loathe corruption in government, and if the Mueller investigation had turned up anything worthy of impeachment, then I would have supported impeachment, even though I'm not certain about Mike Pence. I would even risk the impeachment of both Trump and Pence 
if they are both guilty of corruption, despite the fact that this would put Nancy Pelosi in the White House. I personally despise Pelosi. She spearheaded the efforts to pass the Affordable Health Care Act without regard to what it would do to the labor markets, and she did it during a massive economic downturn when jobs were disappearing. Generally, I'm allergic to those levels of stupidity. Still, if Trump and Pence are both criminals, then they need to go. Then again, so do many others if we hold them to the same standards. Trump is accused of campaign finance law violations. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez faces allegations that she and her campaign manager transferred nearly a million dollars in campaign contributions to a couple of shell corporations in violation of campaign finance law. Trump is accused of nepotism. Maxine Waters repeatedly employed her own daughter to work in her campaign at a substantial salary and sits on the House Finance Committee, which regulates banking law, despite the fact that her husband is a bank director and at times under investigation by this committee. Trump is accused of racism. Ilhan Omar was actually condemned indirectly by the House for anti-Semitic remarks, and she sits on the House Foreign Affairs Committee. Trump is accused of opposing free speech. But more than a few members of Congress have stated directly that various statements are, quote, not free speech, unquote. Steve King keeps making racist statements. Adam Schiff may be tampering with witnesses. Elijah Cummings has allegedly colluded with Lois Lerner and the IRS to quash an investigation. Obviously, there is a problem with corruption and influence peddling in Washington. Now, I know that this is a great example of a tuokuoque argument, but the very things which are being bandied about daily as reasons why Trump should be removed from office and prosecuted are rife throughout the federal government. If he should be removed from office, then so should everyone else guilty of these things. I wonder who would survive a sweeping investigation of every elected and appointed official in Washington. Would we even have a working federal government? I can only conclude that these investigations are partisan politics at their worst, campaigning on the public's time and the public's dime. We didn't elect either the president or Congress to do that. We elected them to get on with the real business of the people, addressing real issues, legislating real solutions, and governing our nation in the people's best interests, not their own. They should remember that. The buck stops with them, and we aren't paying them each $174,000 or more for fishing expeditions. Now that's just my opinion. Comment below to share yours. Check out my playlist and these channels I have subscribed for more great content. Like, share, and subscribe, and make sure that you ring the notification bell.